Let's just let the mask stare into our souls for a little bit, shall we? Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Uh, anyway, welcome to a very special burning edition of Ben's Junk. And of course, I'm referring to the mask. What do you think I was referring to? Sickos. Anyway, um, it's getting to be Halloween time again, so I figured this would be as good a time as any to dust off the old Rejuvenique and take a closer look at the mask and how it works and everything. Now, I know we kind of did this in the Rejuvenique episode, but just lighting-wise, I couldn't really make it work. Focus-wise, I couldn't really make it work, and I was trying to keep things moving to some degree. I knew the testing part of the episode was going to take a big chunk of the episode, so I was trying to keep things moving along as best as I could, and some things had to be sacrificed. So, here we are. And we've got the mask. We will look at that a little closer in just a bit. But let's do a quick rundown of the stuff that it came with. So here is the product registration card, as I mentioned in the episode. And no, it is not. It has not been filled out. But uh, it goes to a, a P.O. box not too far from Archive HQ. So there you go. And here's the little brochure that it came with that has all the, like, moisturizers and stuff. Um, yeah, what is that? Body moisturizer. There you go. And if I remember right, this stuff was pretty pricey. Yeah. Vitamin C serum, one ounce bottle, 50 bucks. Back in the late 90s. So, uh, I don't know, was that, uh, 70, 75 by now? Anyway. There you go. And the owner's manual. This is something I would have liked to have discussed a little more in the episode, but uh, again, just trying to keep things moving and lighting-wise, all that stuff. So in this manual, there's uh, some kind of frightening stuff, and the one that stands out in my mind, if I can find it, is... Uh, it's in here somewhere. Oh, the, some of the pictures are a little on the grotesque side. But let's see, it's got to be here somewhere. I might have flipped past it. Yes, I did. So here's a whole page on replacing burned out contact points. And you get to do it with a couple pairs of tweezers because apparently these things burn out quite a bit. So I guess the blackened pin on the inside of the mask, which I will show you, um, it wasn't too uncommon. But there you go. It's uh, it's a slightly disturbing read. I don't think it was intended to be, but it is. And we've got, of course, the videotape, the 10-minute videotape, which transferring this wasn't the easiest thing in the world. It took me a couple passes. Uh, but here it is, the world's cheapest, thinnest videotape. You could probably drive your thumb through the front here. There is no latch. There never was. And um, super cheap everything. You could kind of crank the little wheels there all you want. Uh, rewind it by hand. Why not, if you're bored? So, there you go. And then, of course, we've got the toning gel, which I did use a few times. And I've still got a fair amount of it left, actually. But let's get good and close. And if I remember right, it's like everything that would help amplify a charge. So if you look at like glycerin, um, yeah, I didn't read this until it was too late. But um, I, I seem to remember in the episode saying uh, something about that. I think it's meant to conduct. It is. It is meant to make the charge heavier, which I don't know why you would. But anyway. Here is the control, which uh, I put the battery back in just for you, because I love you so much. Um, I took it out after making the episode last year. But I will hold this up to the microphone, so if you've never heard it before, you can hear the wonderful beep that it lets out whenever you turn it on. And uh, it gives you the ready sign here, and then you can hit start, and it'll start electrocuting you. 
and uh, test. If I remember right, I, you can just test each individual area, which uh, there are 12, I believe. Let's see, 7, 8, 9, 0, 10, 0. yeah, 11, I think, 11 or 12. And let's get up close and personal with this. I'll turn this back off. So there's a low battery indicator that would come on on the screen down here in the corner, uh, which you just saw flash there. That always happens when you turn it off. And then the test button, which goes through the cycles, and then start to start a 15-minute session. I don't know why anybody would be crazy or dumb enough to do that, but, you know, it takes all kinds. And then the big scary blue knob, the pulsation control, which, when you turn on it, lets the beep occur, and then you can turn it up to what I'm pretty sure is 10 kilovolts. But there you go. And as I mentioned in the episode, it's uh, just an honest-to-God phone cord. I'm, come on, focus. There you go. It is a phone, and uh, I, I toyed around with the idea of actually plugging this into the wall but uh, I didn't really want to find out what might or might not happen. But it hooks up uh, to the bottom, and then it hooks to the bottom of the mask, and um, it lets out this kind of, you know, they call it pulsing in the video, and I call it that in the episode. It really does that, and it makes this um, sparky ticking sound and um, I had to admittedly amp that up a bit for the video because it's so faint that you really only hear it if you have everything hooked up and you have this right up against your ear and you're in a quiet room but there you go so let's move on here to the mask itself and I intend on doing a commentary on this episode, so I don't want to give too much away here, but uh, I will say this much. I did not actually use the Rejuvenique in the episode. Here's why. Initially, I had planned to do actually use this thing in the episode, but when I first got it, you know, in the name of doing testing, you know, safety and all that, I, I didn't really trust this thing, and uh, it, it amazes me that people ever use these. Um, not that many ever did, but it's aside the point. Uh, so when I got it, I put some toning gel on the pins like you're supposed to do. And here's the strap that I used to adjust in the episode. But uh, I put some on each individual pin... And I tested it just with this laying on a chair next to me, and I just had my hand uh, resting on it while it did its thing. And um, it burned me. It burned me pretty good. And I had, I wound up with a little scar on the back of my hand. It's healed now, but you can, I think you might see a little bit of where it used to be, right at my fingernail. Um, I had a, that for about five or six months, took a long time to heal, and it hurt like hell, too. Um, so when that happened, of course, my actually putting this on my face, even though you never see my face anyway, it just, it wasn't going to happen. So uh, here's the pins. Uh, everything's its own region. So like this would be region one, two, three, and one of these is the grounding pin. I think it's the one at the chin, if I remember right. But um, you, you can adjust these things. You can screw them up and down. And uh, they're just push pins, I guess you can call them. And then the blackened one here that I mentioned in the episode. See if I can't make the camera focus on that. Um, that's not the one that burned me, but I'm wondering if it didn't burn uh, whoever had this before me. Something happened uh, there. I, it's not corrosion. So I, I really don't know what happened. Anyway, um, so there we are, and of course the box. We'll just say hello to Linda Evans here, real quick, and uh, in fact we'll look, we'll make her wear the mask as best as we can. But before we go, one more uh, you know point of business here. It's been a long time since I've done any stupid publicity stunts or anything for the archive, so I figure I'm about due. So, um, 
you know, let's, uh, I can make this guy angry if I want. There. Let's have uh, Mr. Angry Rejuvenique tell you all about a contest we're having. Uh, we're um, going to have a contest, obviously. And uh, over the course of the year, I found another Rejuvenique in a thrift store, and I picked it up for some dumb reason. I don't know why, but here's the thing. If you want your very own Rejuvenique, you can have one. This is not one of my jokes. So, here it is. Your very own Rejuvenique. It unfortunately does not have the videotape or the manual, but um, it's got everything else, even the toning gel. So, there you go. This can be all yours, uh, preferably within the U.S. only, uh, but if you send me something really cool, funny, whatever, I might reconsider. But... Um, if you want your own Rejuvenique, here's what you do. You need to write me a 100-ish word essay on why you think I should send you the angry Rejuvenique. The other one's angry, too. They're all angry. And uh, you can put it in the YouTube comments here. You can hit me up on Facebook. You can email me at oddityarchive at gmail.com. I'll put up all the info once I'm done here. Uh, you can write me a multi-part tweet, I guess, if you like. But if you want this mask, send me your 100-ish word essay. If you go a little less or more, or if you want to send me a thousand word essay, I guess that's okay. But send it to me by um, October 19th. How about that? Uh, that way I can ship it out the next day, and hopefully you can have your very own Rejuvenique by Halloween. And of course, um, you know, I'll have to post something probably on the website, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere, maybe even here on YouTube. I might have to make just like a text only video or something to name the winner. And then hopefully everybody can get in touch with me nice and fast and I can send it to you nice and fast so you can scare the living crap out of your neighbors for Halloween. And if I don't receive anything, or they're all really lame, I guess I'll just hang on to the second Rejuvenique, and I'll just be that creepy guy who has two Rejuveniques for some reason, as if one wasn't bad enough. So anyway, you want a Rejuvenique? Send me those essays. October 19th, 2015. And that's it for today. Me and the Angry Rejuvenique, signing off. <laughs>